there are many different kinds of plants in the world, most of them fit into one of three groups. Ferns, mosses, and mushrooms make up the simplest plant group. These plants need lots of humidity to grow. They're often found in rainforests and other damp areas. Some mosses even attach to rocks near rivers and ponds. Gymnosperms are plants that make their seeds in cones, and they usually have needle-shaped leaves. Pine trees, cedars, and redwoods belong to this group. Okay, well, the pine toad, what happens is the different pieces of the pine toad open up, and, the, and they have these little seeds in them, and there's a little seed. And it has a little wing on it, so it could kind of like float down or fly down and, and get dispersed by the wind. The next time you see a pine cone, you'll know it's part of a gymnosperm. The third group is made up of angiosperms, or flowering plants. This is the largest group in the plant kingdom. In fact, there are thousands of flowering plant varieties. But all flowering plants share a common structure, beginning with the roots. Plant roots have two jobs. First, they anchor the plant in the ground and keep it standing. Roots also supply the plant with minerals and water by absorbing them from the soil. The stem holds leaves and flowers in place and helps transport nutrients to them. Some plants have thick and fleshy stems, like this cactus. Tree trunks are actually large stems. The leaves of a plant are its food producers. Using energy from sunlight, leaves convert carbon dioxide and water into sugars that feed the plant. Leaves fan out so that they can get as much sunlight as possible. The most beautiful part of a plant is its flower. Flowers also have an important function. They're responsible for producing seeds and ensuring the plant's reproduction. But why are there so many different kinds of flowers? Well, in order for a plant to reproduce, it has to exchange a grainy substance called pollen with other plants. Since plants are rooted in the ground, they rely on bees and other insects to move pollen from one flower to another. Many plants have colorful and fragrant flowers so that insects will visit them. While plants benefit from some animals, like bees, they can be harmed by others, so they've developed a few clever defenses against their enemies. If you've ever pricked yourself with a rose stem or accidentally brushed against a cactus, you already know about one kind of plant protector. These thorns are actually modified branches. Some plants rely on insects for pollination, and others need them for food. The Venus flytrap captures flies with its leaves. They close slowly. See how it's closing on my finger? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's closed very slowly. It's got me now. Almost all flowering plants start out like this. If you think about it, seeds are pretty amazing. Until they're planted, seeds can survive cold weather and harsh conditions. That's because they have a hard outer layer called a seed coat. And this coat protects them from harm. Once the seed germinates, or begins to grow, it's called a seedling. Roots form and the stem reaches out of the ground. Eventually, a flower will bloom and the cycle will begin again. The next time you walk through your yard, eat a vegetable, or even visit a greenhouse, you'll be able to recognize the three different groups of plants and how they live.